Skywatch Media News for October the 1st, 2020. If you happen to be a solar skywatcher who follows the sun's dynamic cycles, then you probably welcome the recent news, which heralded a sign that our sun was moving out a period of minimal activity and into a more productive cycle, one that would produce more sunspots and more solar flares. For a short while, it looked as if the sun was beginning to wake out of its slumber, when, on October the 26th, a quick episode of sunspot redevelopment produced a minor C-class solar flare in the sunspot region called AR-2773, as shown in the false color enhancement from the Al-Sadim uh, Observatory located in the United Arab Emirates. But as predicted by the observation of the sun's decay field, sunspot 2773 was short-lived, lasting less than 12 hours. It had already dissipated, as shown in the white light imagery. And so the sun's deep and drawn-out solar minimum persists, with spotless days now reaching 192 in 2020, a 73% ratio. What the C-class flare did manage to accomplish was a glancing blow to the Earth's magnetic field on September the 27th. The agitation resulted in a G1-class geomagnetic storm, which allowed the solar wind to blow through a crack in the Earth's magnetic field at a rate of 500 km per second. The magnetosphere that surrounds our planet transformed protons and cosmic radiation from the solar winds into an iridescent formation of spectacular green and pink auroras across the northern latitudes, which in this event lasted for many hours. But there was one very noticeable difference with this display. Normally, the aurora, when it appears, would be visible in the hues of green and violet. However, on September the 26th and 27th, a rare pinkish rose-colored rendition spread across the sky. The highly unusual rose-colored auroras are meaningful because they portend that something is amiss with the Earth's magnetic field. What the pink auroras signify here is that the high energy particles from the sun are penetrating much deeper into the Earth's atmosphere. They are reaching lower altitudes where they then strike the air molecules of nitrogen that make up 78% of the Earth's atmosphere. So what we see happening with the aurora borealis is that the highly charged particles masquerading as pink streaks of light in the lower atmosphere are occurring in large part because of the spotless sun. Most auroras form anywhere from 60 to 150 miles above the Earth in the upper thermosphere, 
but the pink auroras occurred below the 60-mile threshold at the bottom of the thermosphere. These particular auroras were so unusual that they extended out of the Arctic and well into southern Canada and portions of northern Europe. In central Alberta, the lights produced an incredible double moonbo across the horizon. And in Glasgow, Scotland, the northern lights were plainly visible. The NOAA may be slow to admit it, but the predicted sunspot number, as well as the radio flux, appears to show the possibility of an extended solar minimum, one that may last for many more years. Their solar forecast generally comes out higher than NASA's, where on the low end we will not see the peak of the next solar cycle until at least mid-decade 2025, where we could see close to 115 sunspots. On the high end, it's possible that we may not experience the next cycle for another 20 years. At the moment, the probability of an extended period of solar minimum is based on conjecture, mostly due to incomplete information. But the current lack of solar activity is having a profound effect on the Earth's magnetic field. It is waning. Another significant crack has opened in the field that protects our planet, and it is the second time that this has occurred in 2020. The last one was on February the 17th, when a series of sudden and unexpected auroras called shock auroras were observed over the Lofoten Islands, despite the absence of a coronal mass ejection and solar wind impact. If you consider the probability of an extended solar minimum coupled with a magnetic pole shift here on Earth, then we are looking at two independently occurring factors that will drastically reduce the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. When this occurs, the following things will take place on our planet. First, there will be an influx of atmospheric cosmic rays, which will lead to increased cloud formations, an event already happening on a sufficient scale here on Earth. Consequently, the cosmic ray influx will result in the heating of muons or electrons in silica-rich magma, which will ultimately trigger large-scale volcanic eruptions. It has been established by well-indexed sunspot numbers that the timing of 11 eruption events in the period between 1700 and 2005 indicated that 8 of the 11 silica-rich eruptions occurred during the inactive phases of solar minimum. Therefore, there is a strong negative correlation between solar magnetic activity and the cosmic ray flux when compared to increased volcanic activity. Outbursts from the sun, even minor ones such as the recent G1 storm, have the potential to produce surprisingly dramatic results such as the rare pink auroras, including the possibility of interference with the Earth's electrical grid. If you have ever witnessed your lights flickering on a perfectly sunny day, then most likely you're experiencing solar interference from a weakened magnetic field. If you ask NASA what's happening with the sun in these times, you will get conflicting and sometimes confusing answers. On one hand, they will tell you that the next solar cycle will be the lowest in 200 years, dating all the way back to the Dalton minimum that began in the year 1790, a period of low activity which continued for more than 40 years. What NASA fails to mention are the events that took place during these unprecedented years in the late 18th century and the early 19th century, where crop losses, famine, and volcanic eruptions were the order of the day. Neither are they warning you of what a major solar flare could do to our electrical grid, given the fact that the magnetic field is waning and becoming more vulnerable to these solar winds. Understanding what is happening to the magnetic field here on Earth 
is especially important given the fact that the giant transformers that are part of the integrate network of power grids are thought to be vulnerable to geomagnetic storms. If Solar Cycle 25 remains relatively quiet, as is predicted, then, as odds would have it, the Earth will not be struck by another Carrington-like solar cataclysm, and that would be welcome news. But even a quiet sun can unleash a gigantic explosion that, if directed towards our planet, could severely impact our outdated electrical network. And so it is, there is never a lasting guarantee. Regardless of the circumstances surrounding solar activity, a weak cycle that lasts for years, even decades, as was the case more than two centuries ago, could, as it did in our past, produce long-lasting problems for civilization. And that doesn't even take into account what could occur when the Earth's magnetic poles finally flip. And so, my friends, keep your eyes focused on what's happening in the heavens and here on Earth, because we are living in interesting times, and at this moment, time is fleeting. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and always keep looking to the sky.